Today we're going to learn all about the most innovative and fast moving British English accent, multicultural London English. And we're going to do that by watching an interview with the hugely popular British musician Stormzy. So if you truly want to learn about fresh modern British English, stay tuned. <music> Welcome to Eat Sleep Dream English. If you haven't met me before, my name is Tom and I teach fresh modern British English so that you can take your English to the next level and achieve your life goals, whatever they may be. Now, before we get to Stormzy's interview, I want to talk a little bit about what multicultural London English is, or MLE as it's also known. MLE is a modern British English accent that is predominantly spoken by young people of different ethnicities in and around London. Now, I think this accent is an amazing representation of modern Britain because it draws on influences from all around. So it's a bit like a British stew. You've got influences from all the major immigrant groups in London, such as African, Caribbean, Indian, Bangladeshi, etc. You've also got elements of a Cockney accent, which is the traditional working class accent of London. You put all these elements together and you have MLE. So it's an accent that transcends ethnicity. And if you come to London, spend any time here, you will hear it everywhere that you go. So I'm really excited to get into this interview with Stormzy and try to identify what interesting linguistic features uh, Emily has. Just before we start guys, I just want to remind you that I've done several other videos with other famous people. So we've got Adele, we've got Paul McCartney, we've got Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. If you want to learn English with any of those people, the links are above. Okay, let's get going. Tell me this though, why is that drink popular? Uh, it's just a kind of rapper thing, isn't it? All right, we're starting off with the word in it. This, in my opinion, is genius. It's a word that helps you avoid difficult grammar. Right, so let me explain that to you. So in his sentence, it's a rapper thing in it. What is in it replacing? Well, it's replacing isn't it, isn't it? That is a question tag, we call that a question tag. So it's an auxiliary that we use at the end of a sentence to make it a question. So for example, you like chocolate, don't you? You like chocolate, don't you? The don't you there is the question tag. But here, he's just using in it because in it can replace any question tag. It used to be, isn't it? But frankly, you can use it for any question tag. You're from London, in it. So not you are from London, aren't you? Take the aren't you away, in it. You support Tottenham, in it. You support Tottenham, in it. Should be don't you, right? Should be you support Tottenham, don't you? You don't need don't you. It's too complicated, just use in it. It's making the English simpler. It's making it easier. You don't need to think about, oh, okay, which auxiliary do I need to use? No, just say in it. And this is really common in multicultural London English and in other accents as well. So it's used as a question tag. Or it's also used to agree with someone. So uh, if they just said, um, you know, it's cold outside, you might say in it as like a way to agree with them. But here in this interview, Stormzy uses it a couple of times. Uh, it's just a kind of rapper thing, isn't it? Now, I'm going to say right now, guys, you need to be aware of uh, when you're using your English and in what context. And therefore, is this kind of language appropriate for the context that you're going to use your English? So if you're learning English um, for a business presentation and for clients, then using the word in it probably isn't appropriate, okay? But if you want to learn English because you are um, listening to music, British music, or uh, watching films, then yeah, this is really interesting and important stuff. So think about the context that you're going to use your English, all right? I don't really like either. I don't really like either. Now, let's look at that either there. Either, either, you can say whichever you want. It's the TH there. He uses a V sound, V, I, V. Um, I would say it in my accent, I, V, I, V. But he's using a V sound. And that's, that's common in a Cockney accent as well. So that shows you the, the Cockney influence into uh, the MLE accent is the V sound. So either, neither as well might be. Uh, you might have brother or uh, yeah, brother again. So that V, V sound uh, in received pronunciation is V in MLE. 
I don't really like either. And then I remember driving, I was on my way to the airport. One feature of Emily that I find really interesting is stress. Now, uh, in an Emily accent, stress is used in a really interesting way. It's, it, there is a lot of stress going on, on certain words, certain syllables, um, to show emphasis. So here is like the airport, like really putting a lot of stress on the, on the first syllable there of airport. Um, I guess it's just, yeah, just to, to emphasize something or to, to make something clearer. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a feature of the MLE accent that we're going to see uh, later on in the interview. That, and I remember driving, I was on my way to the airport. And for time, I'm racking my brain thinking, where have I, I know this song. Just a little vocabulary feature there, for time. Just means for a long time. So for time, I was racking my brain. Racking your brain is trying to think, trying to remember something. So for a long time, he was trying to remember where he'd heard this song. And for time, I'm racking my brain thinking, where have I, I know this song? Calling him back saying, nah, 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 you need to tell me which ones. This is another feature that I hear a lot. Nah, nah, nah. Not no, no, no. Nah, 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 nah. Again, you'll find that in a couple of other accents, but definitely in the MLE accent. Nah, 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 nah. Ah, uh, I know about those. Travel yeah, time. Yeah, 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 I see. Okay, I know about those. Now, he says those, those, with a D sound on that TH. Now, in received pronunciation, in, 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 in some accents, you'll have those, the, the sound. But here, d, it's replaced with a d. So in the MLE accent, when there's a v, you could use a d instead. So those here, instead of this, is this, or that is that, etc. Okay, I I'm doing a terrible job of, of recreating it, but you get the idea, right? Uh, I know about those. Now, some of you would have noticed that that's the same sound, v, is the same sound in those as it is in either or either that we met earlier. Now, in that first one, he used a v sound because it's in the middle of a word so either either or either but because it's at the beginning of a word now with those we're using a d sound so d, these those that etc so uh that same sound the could be pronounced with a v or with a d because it's waterproof now this phone's waterproof yeah this phone's waterproof so another influence of the cockney accent coming in water Use that glottal T, water, waterproof. So that T disappears. Uh, as I say, that's from Cockney. Um, also though, interestingly, Ed Sheeran also uses it. He uses that glottal T as well. So the glottal T, dropping the T, it appears in, in lots of different accents. So you've got Cockney, where it was mostly featured, uh, multicultural London English, and in contemporary received pronunciation, which is the accent that Ed Sheeran uses. So the glottal T is found in, in, in a multitude of accents. Because it's waterproof now. This phone's waterproof? Yeah. Oh my days, I don't believe this. <laughs> Great phrase here, oh my days, just to show surprise at something, like you can't believe something's happening, oh my days. What, what, what was a, uh, an opinion you had on me before you met me? Bruv, I'm not gonna do you know, I'm not even saying this because you're here. Interesting bit of vocabulary there, bruv, short for brother. Uh, it replaces mate. Um, it's something that you call a friend or someone like that. Uh, it's a term of endearment. Um, yeah, so he calls Ed Sheeran bruv in this one. Bruv, I'm not gonna do you know, I'm not even saying this because you're here. You was everything that I hoped for you to be. <laughs> Little bit of grammar here. So, you was everything. Now, in standard British English, you would say you were everything, right? You conjugate that verb to be as you were, but in Emily accent, um, it's uh, perhaps a non-standard form uh, of the verb to be, so you was um, there. This, again, is something as a learner of English, maybe it's important to be aware of that um, it's not a mistake on his part, it's just the grammar that he uses. You was everything that I hoped for you to be. <laughs> you can't say that without it being cute, innit? Another use of in it. So you can't say that without being cute in it. But how confusing to think, well, what was the auxiliary? The first one was can't, so it has to be can now. Just say in it, much easier. As in, they are from my area. I see them all the time. All right, there we go again with they. So they becomes they, which is that duh sound on the. You'll also see on area, he's using a slightly wider vowel sound. And also the stress, putting a lot of emphasis on that word uh, because he, he thinks it's important in the sentence. It's an important piece of information. So he's getting extra stress. As in, they are from my area. Literally, thinking, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why it's so sick. Piece of vocabulary there, sick as an adjective, here meaning like cool or awesome or brilliant or fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's so sick. And you see, you could buy them from Superdrugs for £19.95. 
got interesting things on the T's here. So he says the T for 19, but then he drops it later for 90. So um, sometimes he'll use the true T, sometimes he'll use a glottal T there. And that's interesting because I think in MLE that is, that is something that happens where there's not a consistent use of either the glottal T or the true T. I think there's a mixture of sometimes uh, in MLE you'll use the T, uh, the true T, sometimes you'll drop it. Um, depending on how you feel. So, uh, yeah, here he, he uses both. And you see, you could buy them from Super Drugs for £19.95. And I remember thinking, oh my days, that's so expensive. Thinking there, he uses F on the TH. So the TH in received pronunciation would be thinking, thinking. He's using F, so it's thinking. As an influence of the Cockney accent there. He uses oh my days again. I think he loves that phrase. And I remember thinking, oh my days, that's so expensive. And I remember him being so high. The I again there, high, really wide, really wide sound there. And again, interesting emphasis, so and high, getting all the stress. And I remember him being so high. He probably don't even remember. <laughs> We've got another example there of a use of non-standard grammar. So he said uh, he probably don't, instead of he probably doesn't. Doesn't would be the standard grammar, standard form of grammar. But he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's using uh, he don't. Uh, again, that's used in quite a few different accents, but a feature of MLE and certain accents in London could be from Cockney. That's another feature of Cockney, that non-standard um, conjugation. He probably don't even remember. <laughs> if I was dead, he was like, Was this recently? Oh. No, this was ages ago. He definitely didn't know me. Another example of a vowel getting a wider sound, phone, phone, phone. O has a wider, broader sound. <laughs> he was just, I was like, oh, my phone's dead. He was, was like, this oh. recently? No, this was ages ago. He definitely didn't know me. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little look at multicultural London English. I think it's fascinating. It's an incredibly interesting interesting accent that has evolved and developed over the years because of the influences that London has in particular. I advise you to check out more of uh, Stormzy's work. Uh, his music is fantastic, super popular here in Britain and you'll hear his accent and the language that he's using. So if you enjoyed it guys, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below who would you like me to do next? Which accent, which famous person would you like me to do a little uh, study on? Yeah, tell me in the comments below. Uh, remember, if you want to be a member of Eat, Sleep, Dream English, you can hit that join button. I've got lots of t-shirts and merchandise at my shop. You can check that out as well. And of course, go to my Instagram page where I do fresh modern British English every single day. All right, I think that's enough. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. This is Tom, the Chief Dreamer, saying goodbye. <laughs>